What's up, what's up, what's up? IAQ Josh here, back at our Fort Lauderdale property where we were just a couple of days ago. Uh, we made a nice little informational video regarding why we don't convert a garage, and if we do convert a garage, why we want to look and opt for that permanent process. Uh, what we're doing today is we just finished the remediation work within this garage area. Uh, you can see to the top of this picture here, we've got some poly or plastic sheeting up on the ceiling area. This entire ceiling was removed, including the, uh, uh, excuse me, the ceiling fan that we had up top here. The actual blades on there were just sagging. Definitely, it seems like this was a very moist environment for a long period of time. We've also got the garage door exposed, and as you can see, it's not in the best of shape, but hey, you know, obviously you have this thing sealed up for years, this is probably what it's gonna look like. Nonetheless, we have cleaned this entire area, scrubbed it down numerous times. I mean, it is squeaky clean. So what we're doing today is a post remediation evaluation. This is where we are going to evaluate the remediation services that were performed. Uh, we've got our spore trap sampler. We've got our laser particle counter. We've got a couple of ATP swabs and what we're going to be doing today is checking cleanliness both regarding uh, particulate matter that's floating about the air on surfaces we're going to test to see if there is any relatively high numbers here everything should be nice and low now that we've done all the remediation work um, depending on what these results come back as it's going to dictate whether our company is back in here to do continued remediation efforts to get this place spick and span or if we're ready to have our final post remediation verification, which as you guys all know, and you know me by now, that is completely independent. That's gonna be a third party company that comes in to verify everything and see what it likes. So let's jump into some of what we're gonna be doing. All right, so now what we're gonna be doing is calibrating our instrument here. We wanna make sure that we are working within our 15 liters per minute, which is gonna be standard pump operation here. So we're going to hit this calibrate button. We're going to see what this little gem goes up to here. It should kind of teeter right around that 15 liters per minute. Assuming it does, we'll be in good shape. Uh, we have this guy calibrated annually. We also have our pumps calibrated basically a couple of times a month, depending on how much usage they get. So a lot of redundancies in place. 15 liters per minute, we're good. We're going to program that in there. And now we're gonna actually go through the spore trap collection process. All right, now that we've got our sample on here, we're gonna hit this 10 minute button. We're gonna let this puppy go for 10 minutes, which is gonna give us a total of 150 liters within this sample here. We like to run 10 minute samples just because it gives us the best chance of collecting anything and everything that's circulating. Uh, we also have an air filtration device over to our, uh, over to your right, over to my left, that's running in the background here. Uh, this is ensuring that we're constantly stirring up the environment. We are not sampling inside of a still environment. Um, one thing we're also going to do, running in conjunction with the spore trap here, is we're also going to consume or consume procure particle counts just to see what the overall aggregate is inside of the uh, air quality. We just want to check everything from pollen, pet dander, mold spores, anything and everything that could be floating around. We want to get a quantitative value on here. If this quantitative value is a bit higher than I'd like, we won't even submit this to the laboratory. If the numbers come in and they look good or on the fence, that's where this is going to go to the laboratory regardless. Just to be clear, the spore trap sampler and laser particle counts, the two aren't mutually exclusive, meaning you can have high particulate readings and still have a very low or almost non-existent quantity of spores that actually show up. So what we do is just like ATP is just a reference to the cleanliness of the surfaces, the particle counts are reference to the cleanliness of the air quality as a whole. So again, we're looking for relatively low numbers across the board, both on surfaces and both on airs but let's check out the process with uh, procuring laser particle counts. All right, so what we've got here is a Particles Plus. This is the 8306 model. Uh, this is a laser particle counter, which also is going to provide us with readings as far as the temperature and relative humidity within the air. 
So using this device, we can get a, you know, a general understanding of what's going on within the air itself, from temperature, relative humidity, to quantities of, um, why am I drawing a blank here? Particles. So this is gonna give us overall a quantitative particle count reading within the different uh, particle sizes, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 1, 2.5, 5, and 10. Uh, this overall, like I said, we're looking to uh, aim to see lower quantities, relatively speaking. What we're also looking to see is if we have any, what we call anomalies. Uh, overall, there's a, a log 10, which basically means that you're going to expect a certain number within each category as your quantities go up, or excuse me, as your uh, particle sizes go up, or as your particle sizes go down. So what we're doing is we're trying to see if there's any anomaly, meaning if you've got 10, 100, 1,000, and then you've got 10 million as the next line item, that's not a log 10. That tells us there's something going on and we want to investigate a little bit further. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set this puppy up here on a tripod, not too far from our spore trap sampler, but far enough away where the exhaust of this should not impact that area. And what we'll do is we'll run anywhere from 5 to 10 uh, samples, one minute samples of air and average that out and just kind of see where we stand with things. So let's, uh, let's see how we do. So now as we continue to procure, we went with uh, 10 samples here. So we're doing 10 one minute, excuse me, 10 one minute samples. We're gonna average that out. Uh, one thing that we cannot look past is the fact that we are within a garage here. So in the lower right and the lower left corner of a garage door, just as in this situation as well as even right at the top here, the top of this door, uh, we're gonna have uh, communication between the outside space. So as a result of that, we're going to uh, take into account that we are typically gonna see higher than normal particle counts when it comes to post remediation. For example, if we were working within a home where it's much more of a controlled environment and sealed off from the outdoors, uh, that's an environment that we can control, control, excuse me, can control a little bit better even with the usage of air filtration devices, we're still subject to some of the outdoors here, uh, which again, would even beg the question of why we pull a spore trap sample. Um, this is more so just to get a gauge on what we have as far as uh, spore counts that are inside of the garage area here, even though again, it is not a living, uh, excuse me, a living condition space. Um, it is still something that we want this background information on just to have an idea of where we stand and how successful overall we were at reducing the quantities of spores. All right, so now that our particle counts are done over with and look satisfactory to me, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into the ATP swabbing process. Uh, this is where we are going to be checking. Uh, ATP is going to be present in all living matter. So if we're picking up any number other than a relatively low number, that tells us that this surface is dirty, for lack of a better word, to some extent. Um, and the fact that we are finding a value on here, if it is unsatisfactory, that's going to tell me that the surface itself needs to be cleaned a bit better because it's impacted. Whether it is mold and fungi, we don't know. It might be bacteria. At any rate, given that this is a post-remediation setting, we should receive some relatively low numbers here. So what we're gonna do is very carefully and methodically pull our Ultra Snap swab out, being careful not to touch it because shame on me, I'm not wearing any gloves. So as we pull this guy out, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go back and forth while rotating the Q-tip. We're basically going one way, then we're going to go the other, and then ultimately finish with a diagonal. And we're going approximately 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, which more or less is about 4 inches by 4 inches. We've got one way and the second way, and now we're going to go back over it in our diagonal. And now what we're going to do is drop it back into here, Gonna give our ultra snap the snap that it needs. Squeeze all that good stuff down. Shake it up just a little bit here. Sing, you can dance, you can do whatever you want while we shake this up just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna drop this down into our ATP reader. Hit that okay button and let the countdown begin. 
12, 11, 10. You get the point. So as soon as this thing is done here, we'll give you our numerical value and tell you if it's satisfactory or not. So we've got a number of 143. And that, to me, I would consider that satisfactory for a mold remediation process. In a perfect world, I would love single digits on here. But again, I'm factoring in the fact that, number one, I'm doing it on floor tile. This floor tile has already been walked on as I came through and even shot this video. We're entering from a side door in a garage. I'm walking through rock. I'm walking through gravel. Who knows what I could have brought in? So we've previously done ATP readings inside of these wall cavities that you see here in the background. Um, this was done before the poly sheeting was put on. Again, as we know, if an assessment contractor comes in here or when an assessment contractor comes in here, they are inclined to pull back that plastic sheeting after they sample for air, do as they please. So we need to make sure that it was clean. Those numbers specifically had a lot lower values, which makes sense. It's not on the floor. It's not exposed to foot traffic. So with a numerical value of 143, I'm satisfied with this. I'm going to sign off on this. and. We're going to bring this thing to a close. Ladies and gentlemen, that is officially it. Finito. Terminado. Fin. So, we're done. We just performed a post-remediation evaluation. Again, this is not to be confused with a post-remediation verification, which would be performed by a completely independent third-party contractor that would actually come in probably replicate most of what I did. It may not be as specific as ATP. They might procure surface samples, uh, the same type of swab samples looking specifically for mold and fungi. Uh, ATP is one option. That's checking overall cleanliness. I feel that's a very important part of the post-remediation process. At any rate, if there's any questions, comments, if anybody wants to yell at me because I didn't wear gloves, I will gladly accept that, you know, because I should have been a little more prepared for this. Nonetheless, wanted to give you guys a little uh, background walkthrough on what we do when we're performing a post-remediation evaluation. A lot of what you just saw as well would also be used on the verification process. So again, any questions, any comments, hit us up below. If you love this video, hit that like button. If you want to subscribe and check out more of this guy and these informative videos, background videos, any of the above, please do so. We love our subscribers. Talk to you guys soon.